Welcome to this training on Unlock NLS Forms. In this video, we will cover the buyer slash tenant representation agreement, lawn form. A couple of notes. First, always check with your broker with any questions about using these forms. Second, the use of this form is only for Unlock MLS subscribers. Now let's discuss why this form is important. Under the rules of Unlock NLS, agents are now required to get a written agreement, such as this, signed before showing properties. You do not have to use this specific form. And you should check with your broker for guidance on which forms are best using your firm's policies. This is the longer version of the form. There is also a short form version, and one that can be used for limited services. One mainly focused on covering one-time showing. This particular long form version is especially important for covering acting as an intermediary. Let's explore this form step by step. The first section of the form is parties. It lists who is a party to this agreement. Take care to fill in all sections, include all the information you have. The second section of the form is appointment. It shows that the client is granting the broker the exclusive right to act as their agent for acquiring property in the market area. The third section of the form is definitions. It defines what it means to acquire, covering both purchases and leases. It defines a closing in each context. It also allows you to define the market area. If you forget or don't fill it in, all of Texas is the default market area. The fourth section is term. This agreement must start and end on a specific date. It's important to fill in the termination date. If you fail to do so, this agreement is not enforceable under state law. The fifth section is broker's obligations. This section covers what a broker's responsibilities are as they serve buyers. It covers efforts related to property acquisition, negotiation, and follow-through of the rest of this agreement. The sixth section is client's obligations. Like it sounds, it covers what the client is agreeing to do based on this form. The client agrees to work only with the named broker, the client will let others know that the broker is representing them in this agreement, and the client will abide by the rest of this agreement. The seventh section is representations. Make sure to review each one. Note that this explains to the client what the nature of the relationship is. All signers need to have the ability to enter an agreement. The client agrees that they are not already the party to another buyer or tenant agreement, and that they will share true and correct information with the broker. Finally, it gives a place for the client to note any employer, any relocation company, or any other entity that will provide benefits to the client when they acquire a property in the market area. The eighth section is intermediary. This is an essential section for every broker and agent to understand because it lays out specifically how intermediary status can work. Note first that it makes it clear what being an intermediary means. This includes how the broker will communicate with the seller or landlord, as well as with the client. It also gives guidance to the broker on how to handle confidential information. The broker agrees to treat all sides fairly and to comply with the Real Estate License Act. Subsection 8A details how this intermediary status will play out if chosen. There are three separate options. Option 1 describes what happens if the owner of the property in question is being served by a different associate than the one assisting with the property search. Here, there will be an associate appointed for the owner and for the client, and these two will each communicate with, carry out instructions of, and provide opinions and advice during negotiations to their respective party. If option 2 is chosen, that means that the owner is already being served by the same associate as the potential buyer. In this case, the broker may appoint a different associate to represent the interests of the client. In the third option, the broker notifies the client that no appointments will be made, and that the associate will act solely as broker's intermediary representative. They will facilitate the transaction without offering opinions or advice during negotiations to either party. Subsection B is selected if the client does not consent to the intermediary status and does not wish to see or acquire any of the broker's listings. The ninth section is competing clients. The broker can represent other clients who might be interested in properties that are also of interest to the client signing this agreement. Without this clause, a broker or agent would not be able to perform their fiduciary duties to all of their clients. The tenth section is confidential information. It details how confidential information will be protected and will not be disclosed without the client's authorization or unless as required by law. It also details the limits on what the broker will share with the client, as related to other agreements and plans. It also talks about how offers are covered and not covered by confidentiality. The 11th section is broker's compensation. 
This section starts with the important reminder that broker commissions are not set by law, and they are fully negotiable. This is required to be disclosed to the parties in any written agreements under the Unlock NLS rules. The first part of this section breaks down how compensation will work for a purchase or a lease. The broker will be paid compensation that is agreed upon by the buyer and can take a variety of formats but must be clearly defined in this agreement. The same is true for a purchase or a lease. Fill in this section based on your agreement with your client. Compensation can be a percentage of a sale or lease, a retainer, an hourly rate, or laid out in another form. The second part of this section focuses on how that payment will happen. Broker compensation can be sought from the seller, landlord, or their broker, and the client will pay the difference. The compensation is earned when the contract is signed and payable at closing. The third part of this section focuses on how compensation is earned and payable. It is earned when the client enters into a contract to buy or lease a property in the market area or breaches the agreement. The compensation is payable at the time of closing when the client breaches a contract to buy or lease a property in the market area or when the client breaches this agreement. The fourth part of this section details what happens when the client acquires a property listed by the broker. The broker's listing agreement will detail how compensation will be offered in this case. The fifth part of this section discusses additional compensation. The broker might be entitled to additional fees for certain types of construction situations with a space to provide fee amounts. It details how a broker might receive a fee from referring to a service provider. It also allows for additional compensation types. The sixth part of this section covers the protection period. Not later than 10 days after the ending of this agreement, the broker can send a written notice with a list of properties to the client. If the client or a family member acquires a property on that list, the broker is owed the compensation listed in this agreement. The amount the broker is owed is reduced if another broker is involved in that acquisition. The seventh part of this section discusses escrow authorization. This section details how escrow and closing agents may be used for completing a transaction covered by the agreement. The eighth part of this section details the county in which the broker will be paid. The twelfth section covers mediation. It shares how the parties will handle any dispute. The thirteenth section covers termination. It shares how the agreement can end and what would still survive a termination. The fourteenth section covers default. If either side fails to comply by the agreement, they are in default. This section details what happens if they are in default. The fifteenth section deals with attorney's fees. It highlights who will cover attorney's fees. The 16th section covers limitation of liability. It details what a broker is liable for and what the limitations are. The 17th section covers addenda. It allows the broker to note which of six noted addenda are part of this agreement, along with a space for additional addenda. The 18th section is special provisions. The broker can include any additional needed notes. The 19th section is additional notices. Read over these and ask your broker any questions. Issues covered include the negotiability of broker fees, fair housing, inspections, the need for an abstract and title policy, the use of residential service contracts, how offers are disclosed, the use of recording devices at properties, care to avoid wire fraud and limitations around legal advice. Talk with your broker about any questions you have about this form and how to use it. Remember, there is also a short form version and a limited services form. For more information on this form or if you have any questions, please contact us at support at abor.com.